go ahead dear heavenly father we come to you under the name of jesus we thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we are about to have god i just uh please pastor deepika and dear hands and to all my students uh, to all our all my friends and students uh, uh, who are about to join uh, god i bless them in the name of jesus i pray that this whole course will be a blessing to each one of us that we will get uh, more closer to you more deeper in our relationship with you and this course will help us to preach your gospel much more boldly boldly to others and to develop ourselves in you jesus be with us and guide us help us to have good wi-fi connections throughout this session and you take the lead and you lead us lord in jesus name i pray amen amen when thank you so much jeffina so uh welcome to this course that we are having on holiness and i hope that it will be a help and a blessing to every one of you um so um uh i will be posting the material you know which pastor ashish has developed on holiness i would be posting that uh, later on um, you know in the day uh, both in the google classroom and for the e platform students also it would be posted um so um you can go through that uh, we would be covering it chapter by chapter uh, a couple of chapters have rearranged a little bit uh, but uh, you know we would be following the material mainly uh so um there are three main sections that this subject has been divided into uh, just to make it very practical and very helpful to all of us uh so the first section um is uh, it's kind of an introduction to holiness uh, where we would we would be looking at different aspects of holiness including the holiness of the lord um then the second section uh would be how do we you know which would 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 be dealing with how do we become holy i keep getting these notifications and i'm trying to figure out what is what okay i think it's fine um uh yeah so the second uh, section uh we would look at repentance the whole process of repentance and restoration because repentance is is the first step towards holiness uh, so we would look into how we need to repent of uh, anything at all that is still there in our lives that is not pleasing to the lord and how that will lead us into greater holiness so we will have a couple of sessions on that in section 2 and then we would go on to the third section uh, which will be talking about overcoming the flesh the world and the devil how do we do that uh, so um Uh, what pastor ashish has put together is a very practical uh, course so we are not really looking so much at the theory of holiness uh, but rather um, at a very practical course uh, which each you know which if we were to apply and practice uh, would actually lead us into a uh, into greater holiness uh, into lives that are more pleasing to the lord uh, so i hope you know that um, uh, this course will be most helpful to all of us and um, as for the assignments um we would just have a couple of um, you know um, mid term and uh, the final assessments and they are multiple choice uh, so um, yeah so i mean it's not really something that uh, you need to be very concerned about uh, just make sure that you you know uh, tick the correct option when you get those multiple choice uh, you know um, questions and that should be all right so there would be two of them uh, maybe after we have finished sections 1 and 2 we could have the first assessment um so that would be 50 questions 50 objective type multiple choice questions and uh, then the um final assessment of course would be at the end which would be another 50 multiple choice questions uh, so um the um, the assessments will not really be a challenge uh, the challenge will mainly be uh, putting into practice all these things that we are going to be studying um having a head knowledge of holiness will realize you know even as we are doing the course is of absolutely no use uh, we would have to actually apply this to ourselves to our lives all right so uh, we'll just uh, you know um, get into the flow of that of practically applying all that is being taught all right so um so uh, under the first section of holiness um we'll be dealing with four different things you know over the next few weeks 
Um, so first, we will look at uh, the, at least today's sessions and uh, the next uh, couple of sessions will be on the holiness of God. Uh, because after all, uh, holiness is all about who he is. And we imitating who he is and stepping into that holiness, which he you know wishes to share with us. Uh, so we will first uh, look at what the scriptures have to say about the holiness of God. So that would be sessions, um, you know, uh, today's session, session one, and also session two, which would be the next times, you know, next Monday. Uh, so these two sessions would be um, looking at the holiness of God and uh, getting to know uh, uh, who he is in the scriptures. And then we will look at uh, why do we need to be holy? Um, why are we required to be holy? So we will look at the why of um, holiness for us, pertaining to us. And then uh, the third thing is, um, once we understand the importance of holiness for us, uh, we will look at how does God make us holy? Uh, we will discover that holiness is not something that we can do on our own. We can, um, we can perform rituals, outward rituals, and try to appear holy on the outside. Oh, but a genuine work of the Holy Spirit would be needed for us to, to, to become like Jesus Christ. So that is something that we will discover. So the third portion in this section one, we would look at how does God make us holy? And uh, we will conclude that section, this section by uh, talking about the importance of displaying holiness in our everyday lives. So uh, these are the four main things that we would be looking at under uh, the first section. So today we will begin with the introduction to the holy, uh, to a holy God. Um, what the, what do the scriptures have to say about this? Um, now, um, if you have any questions or you just want to you know clarify something, um, yeah, you know you can just raise your hand. You know it uh, shows over there, right? I mean uh, you have this option uh, to raise the hand, so you can do that. Uh, if you would prefer to just type in the chat. Uh, I will try to keep an eye on the chat so uh, you know I can um, address whatever questions you raise. So anytime during the class, um, you can go ahead, you know, um, and uh, uh, post that raising a hand uh, thing, you know, uh, or you can put it in the chat, and um, we can deal with it. So it's not like you need to wait until the end of the session to you know uh, raise up uh, doubts and questions. So please feel free to do that. Um, now there would be questions which you will raise for which I do not have answers, at least not satisfactory answers. So in that case, I will, you know, um, try to learn more about that and, um, you know, cover that in the next session. Okay. So um, if I do not have an answer immediately, I will see to it that I get the needed information and I will convey that to you. Um, now there are some questions which people raise, and um, you know it may need a lot of detail. So sometimes I may post the answer in the stream page. You know, so uh, just keep an eye on that in case some uh, major question has been raised during the session, and um, I have not, you know, uh, been able to think up the scripture references off the top of my head. Uh, then I you know I would go later into the scriptures, find out all the relevant scriptures, and then post the answer in the stream page so that you know you can go to those scriptures, look at them, and really um, you know uh, understand uh, what has been discussed. So uh, sometimes uh, some of the answers may get posted in the stream page as well. Uh, so. I think that's um, enough of an introduction regarding the course. So let's get into the holiness of God. Uh, now, the holiness of God is a is a is one facet of the nature of God. Um, there are many many facets to the nature of God. In the sense, we know that God is love. We see Him as a God who is good. Uh, we see Him as the Almighty and all powerful God. Uh, so uh, these are all different aspects of His nature. And we observe that all of these aspects of God's nature have some kind of application directly to us personally and also uh, to uh, in our relationship with other people. What do I mean by that? For instance, if I were to focus on the um, on the love of God. Now, because I know that God is love, it makes me secure in my relationship with him. Uh, so I feel safe and secure with him. But it also goes further uh, in the sense, 
uh, because I am experiencing the love of God, I will try to walk in love towards other people as well. So every aspect of God's nature has a direct implication for me and my personal relationship with the Lord. But it also has a wider implication uh, because once I understand that aspect of his nature and begin to enjoy that, I if I'm truly a believer and I know I am being led by the Holy Spirit, that aspect of God's nature, not only is something that's enjoyed by me, but I begin to share it with others around me. So uh, that could be one way of us uh, trying to assess whether we are growing or not in holiness. Uh, because, you know, um, well, if we have understood the holiness of God, uh, it will affect the way we prioritize uh, you know, our thoughts, our speech, our choices, our actions. Uh, it will also uh, affect the way we relate with other people. Okay, so um, so um, so in the same way, the are the other aspects of God's nature have a personal direct implication for us and a wider implication for others. In the same way, uh, even holiness also uh, has a role um, in our personal lives. And uh, you know, I, I, on, on a wider level, um, if if when I post your notes, you know, later on in the day, um, you will see there are some uh, you know examples given. Um, uh, God is good. That is one aspect of His nature, and because He is good, uh, we know that He will always be faithful in whatever He does with us. You know, in our lives, whatever He permits. Uh, to happen in our uh, lives, it will be out of his goodness that he allows it. So we will have uh, that assurance at a personal level. Uh, but uh, we will also learn to walk in kindness and goodness towards others. Uh, God is almighty and all powerful. That is another aspect of his nature. And um, because he's almighty and all powerful, it causes us to trust him, uh, knowing that even when there are impossibilities in our lives, he will. Um, you know, uh, be there uh, for us and we will be able to deliver us because he is all knowing and all powerful. Um, and at the same time, how is that uh, uh, expressed at a wider level? Because we know that he is all powerful. When we have to reach out to someone and help them, we know that he will release his power and make it available to us so that we will be able to bless that other person you know who is in need uh, so uh, we can expect his power to be revealed uh, in our situations so that we will be able to help someone else who wants who needs to experience his uh, power so uh, in the same way all of these aspects of uh, god's nature uh, affect our lives and the lives of others in the same way even the holiness of God, once we begin to understand it, it will begin to change us personally and it will very much change our um, little circle of influence. Uh, our holiness, which we are now you know, developing because of our contact with the Lord, will begin to spread. And um, we will begin to discover that you know, when we say uh, we are the salt and the light uh, in the city of Bangalore, you know, which is and the vision, you know, that we have vision statement that we make in our uh, APC church, um, you will really begin to see that this um, that you being the light, that you being the salt, it is a light which is tinged with holiness of God. It's a salt that is uh, flavored with the holiness of God. So you are not just simply salt and light. Uh, you are salt and light that is carrying the holiness of God into people's lives. Uh, so it's a different level of uh, saltiness. It's a totally different level of light uh, that you are carrying into people's lives. Uh, so um, when we understand holiness and begin to operate in it, we become that kind of a salt and that kind of a uh, light. Uh, so. Um, Holiness is not just the simple, uh, you know, idea of me keeping a set of rules and regulations and trying to abide by them. No, it's much, much more. Uh, the very nature of God um, begins to permeate me, my thinking, 
my speech i begin to become like him so it's no more just me keeping a set of rules and regulations because i must uh, as a kind of discipline no it's it goes beyond that i start sharing in the nature of god i start becoming like him and uh, that affects the way i relate with everyone else um, so uh, if some you know yeah i will be asking us you know to read a few uh, scriptures now and then so if one of you you know could volunteer and read out the you know scripture that i uh, request um oh wow there's some stuff posted here uh, are the notes already uploaded uh, no so i would be doing that today i will uh, definitely upload the notes today and um, uh, yeah yeah that was the one question uh, so, uh, you know, these are just very short verses that I would ask you to read out and I can quite easily read it out myself. The only reason that I ask, uh, you know, someone else to read it out is so that um, it kind of gives um, others a chance to maybe at least participate in this whole thing, you know, in some way. And also it will give me an idea of whether people are awake and at least, you know, attending and listening. Uh, others have no clue whether what's going on at the other end. Uh, so. Uh, Psalm 99.5, if you know, if we could have someone read out, uh, what does Psalm 99.5 have to say about the holiness of God? If we could have one person read out, please. Psalm 99.5, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it says here what should be our response to the holiness of God. First, it says, exalt the Lord our God. So uh, if the Lord is holy, then I must exalt him in my life, um, which means his interest would have to come before my personal interests. So the first response of mine towards God's holiness would be that I must exalt him. And second, it says, worship at his footstool. Um, so worship is not just something that we do when someone is playing Christian songs and we lift up our hands. Uh, that is just one tiny aspect of worship uh, because we only do that maybe on a Sunday or you know during our private devotions when, you, when we play a few songs and we worship the Lord. Most of our worship happens during the other 90% of our day. Uh, you know, uh, how we interact with people, how we treat them, what are the choices that we make, um uh how how do we use our free time uh, when we are entertaining ourselves what modes of entertainment are we using all of those things are acts of worship so um in all of those aspects we would need to exalt the lord place his interests above our own limited interests and worship him you know you know um in the sense that we honor him in all of these other 90% of the things that we do throughout the day. Now that would be worship. That would be worshiping at his footstool. So yes, it does um, you know, uh, bring pleasure to the Lord when we lift up our hands in worship uh, during the worship time. Uh, but uh, it's also equally important to him uh, what we are doing with the other 90% of our personal lives because he needs to be exalted even in those uh, aspects of our personal lives. Just to look at another scripture, uh, Ephesians 1, 17. Now, this is a very key uh, passage um, uh, because, you know, most of what we are going to be talking about will, you know, hinge on this particular verse. Ephesians 1, 17, please. Ephesians 1, 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, before we get into this verse, um, you know, sometimes I forget to switch on the recording and sometimes I don't unmute and I do all these um, technical mistakes. So if someone could you know, just keep an eye on me and see what I'm doing, uh, because uh, it really helps so that you know, I don't mess up the recording in any way. So just make sure that I have clicked on the recording, I've you know, done the right things with the sound and all of that. And also, uh, sometimes 
uh, it escapes my my attention that you know it's 10 50 and i need to give a break uh, so if i go way over the 10 50 break and just kind of you know if someone could just speak up and say you know ma'am it's break time uh, because otherwise i would just go on and on without even realizing that i'm doing that um yeah okay efficiency 117 we saw that it says here um you know where paul is saying may the uh, may the lord give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better okay so um uh, someone seems to be drilling is do you hear a drilling noise you know on your uh, thing no drilling at your end i'm so glad no, okay thank you thank you lord okay so yeah there's some drilling work going on hopefully they will just stop it all right uh, so uh, the lord uh, is the one who will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and then we will be able to know him better so without the holy spirit and without him giving us the revelation and the wisdom we will never really know god in a personal experiential way so this entire process of holiness this whole process of us becoming more you know into the nature of god it's only going to happen through the revelation of the holy spirit so even as we are going through the course we would constantly have to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, it is through your spirit that this work is going to take place in my life. So, oh Lord, you reveal to me uh, more of, of God uh, so that you will not just know about God, but you will know him in a personal, uh, you will experience his holiness in very personal ways. The Holy Spirit will do that in you. And um, uh, because, you know, you can go and sit in the church and there could be a you know a, a forty minute sermon on the awesomeness of God, uh, about how majestic is He is and how sovereign He is. Uh, you know, someone could take the Isaiah six passage and talk about His His greatness and His bigness, uh, and you can sit over there and get to know all about it. But when the Holy Spirit reveals that to you in your heart, and you and you literally feel the the intensity of His holiness without even thinking twice you'll just drop down on your knees and then you will know what holiness is because the holy spirit has literally revealed that to you in your spirit and caused you to experience that so you see head knowledge is um is good to an extent but uh it is not everything you need a revelation of the holy spirit which is revealed to you in your spirit and that leads into uh, your nature being changed into his nature so even as we are going through this course you know keep this verse in mind uh, how will you know him better you will only know him better when the father when the glorious father gives you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so each of these things that we are going to be talking about it is good for us to know it at the head level but all of these things uh, need to become uh, revelations, rhema words that are literally coming directly from the Holy Spirit into our spirit. And when we catch what he is saying in our spirit, it leads to a change. It leads to a transformation. It's no longer just knowledge that we are holding in our head, but automatically it changes something in our very nature uh, because uh, in our spirit we have caught what the Holy Spirit is revealing. So the Holy Spirit does his work of making us holy in three stages. First, there is a revelation of his nature right inside our hearts. Okay. And then we respond to that revelation. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we respond in, uh, in reverence and respect. Uh, we respond by making the right choices. So there is uh, the revelation is followed by a response. And thirdly, when we respond in the right way, then his nature gets reproduced in us. And once his nature is reproduced in us, it gets revealed. People around us see that there is a change in us and that we are actually carrying his presence and that we are honoring him in all that we do. And then they think, oh, my, this the, the God that this person worships must be someone very special because of the way this person walks with such careful uh, you know reverence wanting to always please and honor this god when people looked at daniel they could all 
you know, automatically see how much he reveres his God. When people looked at Joseph, they knew, you know, whom he worships and whom he looks up to and adores. So this was so clear about these people. And uh, uh, so in the same way, uh, people will see his holiness revealed in us. So we see it's like a uh, process in three stages. First, you have the revelation which comes from the Holy Spirit. We respond to that. Um, and uh, when we respond in the right way, the third step takes place, which is his nature gets reproduced in us. And uh, people are able to see that it gets revealed through us. His holiness gets revealed through us. Um, let's look at uh, an example, uh, you know, Luke chapter 5. And we have a little story there of Peter and his response to the uh, revelation that comes. So Luke chapter 5, verses 6 to 11, if we could have someone read out, please. Luke chapter 5, verse 6 to 11. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the son of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Okay, so here, um, this is a very um, normal, everyday kind of um, event taking place. These people are catching fish. Uh, but then there's a miracle that takes place. And so the amount of fish they catch is extraordinary, not something that could have happened you know, naturally. And once Peter sees that, he understands the awesomeness of this Jesus, whom he was probably just regarding as you know a human messiah. And now suddenly he sees that this is more than just a human messiah, this, this divinity in front of him. And he is, uh, his immediate response is that he falls down on his, on his knees and he says, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Because um, once we stand in the presence of that awesome holiness, we immediately recognize uh, how, how, how uh, short you know, we fall. In, in comparison to that great holiness. So that is his response. And then Jesus very comfortingly says, uh, you don't need to be afraid of me because I'm going to train you. I'm going to change your nature into something else where you will become a person who can uh, fish people you know, out of the sea, rescue them, and uh, um, cause, you know, cause them to have eternal life. So uh, God gives him that assurance. And then the second response is that, immediately he and his companions they leave everything else because now that they have caught a glimpse of the holiness of jesus they nothing else compares to this and they are willing to leave all of that and they are willing to follow him so here you see a uh, revelation coming to them in a very ordinary event something where uh, something in their day-to-day -day lives is going on and suddenly there's a revelation from the holy spirit and immediately there is a response and when that response is right it leads to God beginning his work in that person's life. So here in this particular case, Jesus says, don't worry. You know, I'm going to be working on you. Your nature is going to change. And you will become a person who will fish people, you know, bring them out of that pit and be able to rescue them. So um, and then they, you know, they, 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 uh, they agree to this invitation. They leave everything and they follow him. On the other hand, in the very same chapter, you see another kind of response. Uh, that would be verses 19 to 22. Uh, if someone could read out verses 19 to 22, please. It's in the same chapter, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Luke chapter 5, verse 19 to 22. But they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of jesus seeing their faith jesus said to the man young man your sins are forgiven uh, 21 and 22 
But the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to themselves, Who does he think he is? That's blaspheme. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Okay, so two persons see two miracles in the very same chapter. Uh, when one person sees a miracle, he is immediately struck by the nature of who Jesus is, that he is divine, that he is holy. And that uh, amazes him and shocks him into getting down on his knees and recognizing his own sinfulness. On the other hand, you have another miracle taking place. And here the people who are seeing uh, this miracle, their response is so different. Rather than you know uh, being overcome with awe at what they have seen, they begin to criticize and say, "Ha, ah, you know, who is this person? You know, he seems to be calling himself God. He seems to be saying that he has the power to forgive. Why these two very different responses? Why did one person respond to the revelation being brought by the Holy Spirit in such a positive manner, and the other person, when he, when when the other people, when they receive a revelation from the Holy Spirit?" Their response is so um, uh, wrong. Um, let's look at, uh, at at another passage, which maybe can you know, throw a little bit of light on this. John chapter 8, verses 43 to 47. John 8, 43 to 47. John chapter 8, verse 43 to 47. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? It's because you can't even hear me. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. But you don't listen because you don't belong to God. So this one thing that we need to watch out for when there is a revelation of the Holy Spirit being given to us, have we become people who have hardened our hearts and no longer wish to know the truth? There are people who do not want to know the truth because it will create a lot of problems for them. They will have to change their lifestyle. They'll have to give up things. Uh, they'll have to reprioritize. So it's more comfortable for them to not know the truth. So people who really do not wish to know the truth will react in a very negative manner when they receive a revelation from the Holy Spirit of the truth. Uh, so this is something that we need to watch out for. Uh, when something regarding God, uh, when something from the word of God is being told to us and we feel a very negative reaction you know, from our side, we need to maybe ask ourselves and think, why am I reacting in such a negative manner to this thing which is being told to me from the scriptures? Is it because I am not comfortable with what is being shared? Is it because I sense some way deep down that I'll have to make changes now? So there are people who will not respond positively to the revelation that the Holy Spirit is giving simply because it would be more convenient for them to not know the truth. You know, so. Um, we must be people who are careful uh, not to allow this kind of a hardness to creep in. When we, uh, when we love our life uh, the way it is right now, the status quo, we don't want to change it. We want things to stay the way they are. So if we are very deeply in love with the way things are right now, there is a chance that we will harden our hearts and not want to know the truth. We will not want to know greater revelations of his holiness. Because if we begin to understand how holy he is, it will require a lot of changes. And we may not want that. And so we may sh shun what the Holy Spirit is revealing in the same way these people so foolishly did. And uh, the words that Jesus speaks regarding these people you know, is so serious. They have chosen to have a different father. You see. They were not discriminated against in any way. Um, 
God was willing to be the father of even these Pharisees. Because after all, there were many Pharisees who did turn to Jesus, right? I mean, um, they uh, became part of the family of God. But then there was this one set of people who had made up their minds that it's very inconvenient for them to accept the truth as the truth. So they, you know, they were making up excuses and coming up with arguments to defy what is being revealed to them by the Holy Spirit again and again. And we must be so careful that we don't fall into that category. So when the revelation of the Holy Spirit comes to us, you know, again and again through these scriptures that we are reading, that we are meditating on, reflecting on, when we feel the Holy Spirit kind of, you know, uh, speaking these things to us. We could either have the response of Peter and his companions, or there's a risk that we would uh, begin to, you know, uh, intellectually argue about what is being said, you know, and say, "Ha, ah, is this the right way we should be interpreting this passage?" It is good, of course, you know, never accept any teacher's teaching just for the say, you know, at the surface level. Always go back to the scriptures, look at the references which have been given, make sure that what that person is saying about those scriptures is genuinely the right interpretation. Look at commentaries, you know, or go to people who know the scriptures well and ask them whether what is being taught is correct or wrong. Do all of that, but uh, do not be like the Pharisees who automatically go into argument mode because they feel threatened. They don't want to know the truth. OK, so that's just something that I wanted to touch upon because we are talking about step one, which is the revelation, which is going to be given by the Holy Spirit, which is going to be immediately followed by our correct response. So we need to be having hearts which are open, which are receptive, which are willing to change. So right now at the very beginning on day one of this course, you know, because this is the course on holiness, it's not on any other topic. It's a course on holiness. So right now, today itself, uh, you know, all of us, including me, uh, have to, you know, anticipate and get ready that there are going to be a lot of changes and sacrifices which are going to be required over the next four months. I mean, um, this is something that we need to get used to. This is an idea that we would have to get used to. It's going to be painful, uh, but we cannot do a course like this um, without you know, anticipating and uh, accepting it, it as a given that this is going to be a painful course, which is going to lead to actual sacrifices and life changes. You know, If Romans 12, 1 has to happen to us and we need to become living sacrifices, it's not going to be easy. Uh, the sacrifices are uh, will be demanding because we are choosing to cooperate with the Lord and take on His nature. It's very convenient to be to live with our nature. We've adjusted it over, you know, with it over the years. We have got the right balance of uh, spirituality and um, you know, holding on to our own things, and we're comfortable with this balance. Uh, we have reached a point where. We are not really like the people of the world. We're not evil and our priorities are not worldly and we're not stinking, uh, messy, messed up people. So we are very comfortable at where we are at. But the holiness of God is infinite. So whatever level you and I may be at, he is going to be wanting to lead us into higher levels because there is no limit to uh, to what level of holiness you can enter into because he's infinitely holy. He's going to be leading us into higher levels of it and we will all feel the pinch of it. So let us not be people who are, the Pharisees were very comfortable with their level of holiness. I mean, they would stand there on the you know roadside and be, start saying a long prayer suddenly, like as if you know, God has come upon them and they can't control themselves. And starts, why are they doing that? Just so that everyone will admire them and say, oh my, what a holy man is walking down the road. And suddenly he stops and starts praying. So they were so comfortable with their level of holiness. And people praised them and appreciated them for who they were. But God wanted something which is at a much higher level. And so I, even as I'm you know, teaching this course, you know, like it says so clearly in the scripture, the teachers will always be held more accountable than the students. So I understand that this is going to be a very painful course for me personally. And it will be for all of us as students. But who at the end of it, you know, we will have the nature of Christ. We will be more like him. 
and we will bring such joy to his heart we can never repay him for what he did on the cross for us but at least we will you know we would have we will be in a position where we will be bringing, bringing bringing greater joy to his heart every time he looks at us he'll say ah there see look there is one person who is trying to really please me it will it's the least that we can do right uh, because we can never repay him for all that he has done for us and also the amount of impact that we can have in our you know everyday lives we may or may not be in full time ministry but we all come in touch with people on a day to day basis we will be able to make an impact on them because the the lord will just flow out through us and flow into their situations and be able to help them because there are no blockages here you know in this vessel so he will be able to flow out through me into their lives and do something for them and in fact at the end of the day that's what we all want right to be more effective to be used by him to be fruitful trees not trees you know which have lot of leaves but no fruit um so all these desires will be fulfilled and this is one beautiful course which will help us to get there uh, so at the outset let us know that this is a painful course not an easy course but if we approach it with the right attitude and we eat before each session if we say oh lord holy spirit you know it's not enough to listen to ma'am's words we need a revelation from you you impart something into my spirit oh lord even as i'm listening to the lecture today if we can approach each session with that attitude then the holy spirit will do his work and the rest of the day he will help us to really practice you know what we are learning okay so um so let us be like peter and his friends and not like the pharisees even as we approach this entire topic now um coming to proverbs 17 okay we have a couple of minutes so we can still squeeze in this little bit uh, so proverbs 17 if you could have someone read out please Proverbs chapter one. Hmm. Yeah, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, so that's what happened in the case of the Pharisees. Um, the fear of the Lord, having a reverence for His holiness, that is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. But fools don't want that. They don't want instruction. they don't want this wisdom they reject it you have another verse which talks about so you know uh, the same concept with slightly different wording uh, so if someone could read out proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 proverbs 9 verse 10 mm -hmm. fear of the lord is the foundation of wisdom knowledge of the holy one results in good judgment okay so here it says that uh, uh, the first portion you know is almost the same uh, proverbs 17 and proverbs 910 are almost saying the same thing in proverbs 17 it's saying the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge here it says fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and then it goes on to say that knowledge of the holy one is understanding so we will expand on this after the break no we'll take our 10 minute break so at 11 o'clock if we could have everyone uh, you know um unmute themselves and uh, get back once again into the class so uh, at 11 o'clock we'll restart <laughs> 